offense, and you see Ryan Tannehill leading them out. And one of the things that has really impressed me about Ryan Tannehill has been his perseverance. Early in his career, didn't have the success that he desired. Had some injuries that slowed his development, but he kept working at his craft, and now he's a guy that I think you can put a game on his shoulders. Tannehill with a play fake to Henry. He'll throw instead. It's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. Well, these two teams, they met up way back in the season opener. And it was the visiting Titans who were victorious in that one. So now they'll look for the sweep here back home in Nashville. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Logan Wilson able to record his fifth sack of the season. All right, partner, I'm going to be Captain Obvious right here. Not the start you're looking for offensively, right? Incomplete pass followed by a sack. And when he went down, it looked like that right ankle got turned, but thankfully he popped up okay, and they breathe a sigh of relief on that sideline. Not a great start to this drive. You had the sack, now the false start. I mean, it doesn't take much to either read lips or just imagine what the head coach is saying right now. Get your head in the game, guys. Let's go. They get 14 yards, but not enough for the first down due to the previous penalty. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here is away. Fielded at about the 28. It's a 47-yard punt, but they did give up 10 on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. And he's had a great season so far throwing the football. Very likely could go over 4,000 yards with a good performance here. And even in an age of passing first, that is no small accomplishment. On first and 10, Brown. They'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. The numbers for Smith-Schuster in that game last week, two touchdowns and, don't forget, over 200 yards as well. Not bad. It certainly seemed like every time you looked up, he was catching another touchdown pass, didn't it? And if he wasn't doing the get him down as he's inside the 40. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back to back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. That's going to go down as a loss of nine on the first down play. So now then, the big loss sets up second and 19. Now this throw caught left side. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big play that time through the air. 30 yards. That is caught by Smith-Schuster. And the Jags are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Solid catch there for a man who's been so brilliant this year. Worth pointing out, as we were talking about earlier, there has never in the 60-year history of the award been a pass catcher, tight end, or wide receiver that has taken home the MVP trophy. And the best receivers I've talked with, they know that stat, and it drives them crazy because they understand that without a quarterback, they don't make the plays that they make. But they also don't feel like they get enough credit for bailing out some of the throws the quarterbacks make. Absolutely. Takes two to tango. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seventh. It'll be a three-yard pickup, and it brings up second and goal. And he's 
He's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. Defensively here, you're facing a top-five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high-powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20 because, to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored, give yourself a, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep it. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great effort there with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Jags have taken the early lead. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. And this is up and good. The score now 7-0 Jaguars. So that drive goes eight plays. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. And Lambeau now after the touchdown. He'll kick this one away. Here comes Harris out of the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Second down, they go again with Henry. And this looks a lot like the last play. Behind the line of scrimmage, he's tackled for the second straight go-around. Great job by this Jacksonville D. A first look now for Darrington Evans. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. It's a gain of just three, and the offense likely going to yield to the punting unit here on fourth down. Here's Brett Kern now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is fielded at the 27. That'll be a 47-yard punt, officially five on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. An update now from down at Houston. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. And they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights out in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. They'll look to throw here on first down. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Well, it's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense humming here in the early going. And now he'll fire deep downfield for James. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Top by Kevin Farley. And the Titans are going to take over once again, and they'll have it at their own eight-yard line. And that's what we've seen from this defense all year long because they've been so good at finding ways to take the football away. And they just gave us another example right here. A strong defense, that's something you're going to need to rely on come playoff time. And this crew has got one. There's no doubt about that, Brandon. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Derrick Henry. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Now Tannehill. He's got a man. It's Berkshire, the tight end. 
And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Tannehill. This will be caught by Brown. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Second down and five. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. The Titans on third down, just one for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. He's going deep for Brown, and that is incomplete. Now the coverage excellent there downfield, and it leads to a fourth down. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. A first down carry for Henry. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. Well, he gets attended to, we'll step aside. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. They'll try the left side with Evans. And there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield. Third down, now even tougher. Third and 13 after that loss of a yard. to throw Tannehill nowhere to go here he lost the football much like a running back going through the line quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well he left it exposed that time wound up having it knocked free but fortunately had a learned teammate who was able to get it he's got the distance but it's no good wide to the right and this score will stay right where it is mm. It looked good when it left his foot, but he kind of sliced it a little bit, and he winds up missing it wide right. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. These two teams met in Nashville earlier in the year with the Titans coming away victorious. So a win here in Nashville would give them the season series. The throw over the middle taken in, and he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Now a first down carry for Harris. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Looking to throw. Brown. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. And a throw there. Trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Staying out there. They look prepared to go here on fourth and ten. Back to throw. Brown. 
And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And as a result... It'll be Titan football on the turnover on downs. On first down, it's Tannehill. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Tannehill now to throw, and that is incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early, and now it's fourth down. Here's Brett Kern now, as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. Juju Smith-Schuster and the rest of this offense heading back out there. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that... Mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise, he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. Finds the open target, Arnold. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard in its second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Got a man. That's Richie James. That catch good for fun. It's third down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Going right 
side here, and that's complete. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Here's Brown. A final shot before break. And he slings one that's incomplete. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Jaguars out on top as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, time for a sprint to the finish as it's time to get you caught up with what's